Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series, the podcast that celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Our guest today is Darren Vaughn. Darren is the Communications Director for the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. Darren, it is a pleasure to have you on the Outdoor Adventure Series. Pleasure to be here. Glad that you were uh, that you invited me to be on with you. Of course. And for our listeners, I had the great pleasure to uh, meet Darren. God, it was last September at the Outdoor Writers Association of America's annual conference in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Uh, Darren uh, actually joined myself and my one of my podcast colleagues, Rick Says, uh, as we were uh, facilitating a workshop on podcasting, and that's where we met. Darren, and as I understand it, Darren, you're you're actually going to be embarking on the this podcast journey, which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute. But again, welcome to the show. And if you could, for our listeners, just go a little deeper into your communication director. But what does that mean? Well, in short, it means a, a lot of the time I'm the bearer of bad news. That that's kind of I, I jokingly mention that to, to people uh, when. When uh, mountain lions and various other wildlife show up in areas of New Mexico where they're not supposed to be, namely apartment complexes in Albuquerque, for instance, uh, I'm the one who ends up on TV talking about it a lot of the time. Uh, however, there there is a lot more to it than that. I'm I'm the one kind of promoting a lot of the programs that that we put on here at Game and Fish. A lot of our educational programs. Uh, I I work with our staff to. Uh, to help get the message out there. I also uh, supervise our uh, our regional staff. We've got uh, regional offices in uh, Las Cruces, Roswell, and Albuquerque and Raton. And we've got uh, public information officers out of there that, uh, that uh, work directly with the public in those areas. So I, I kind of supervise them and help them to promote things that are going on in their areas as well. Okay. And that actually begs the question because we have 50 states in this country, and all of the states have some type of department of whether you call it natural resources, game and fish. What is the purview of the Department of Game and Fish in New Mexico? Well, a lot of people kind of see our role as being the agency that sells hunting and fishing licenses and sets all the rules for, for hunting and fishing and things like that. But uh, our our role is actually much larger than that. Um, our, our main goal is to conserve New Mexico's wildlife for, for future generations and also for, for the current generation. Um, without, without conserving our wildlife, we'll, we'll have nothing left going forward. So that, and, and that isn't just the big game species that we're talking about or, or the fish that everybody want, wants to catch and, and have as a, as a trophy. It includes a lot of non-game species that are that are crucial to the ecosystem at large. So a lot of people don't don't think about that. They just see the uh, the uh, game and fish is selling hunting and fishing licenses. But like I said, it's just okay. What are some of the the the, the animals? The, whether it's the fish, the the birds, the mammals that are in New Mexico, but are not the ones we would typically expect, say like a, a mountain lion, or I imagine you have some type of deer population there as well. Snakes, I'm sure they're there, and tarantulas, uh -huh. but I'm sure there's other fish and birds and, and, and mammals that we might not expect. What would some of those be? Well, down in the, in the southern part of the state, uh, we do have uh, an oryx population, an ibex population that we're... Uh, that were imported back uh, several decades back to provide a, kind of an interesting hunting opportunity uh, for for people. But also, um, we have as things have evolved over the the years. Um, there's species from neighboring states that have made their way over here. Recently, we've kind of had an influx of moose coming down from Colorado, for instance, which they're not native to New Mexico. I, I don't know what exactly is drawing them here, but um, so. If you're lucky, you might see a moose, but in general, we've got elk, deer, our, our fish population is, is a lot of trout and, um, 
actually, we have just recently completed a, uh, a multi-decade project to restore our state fish, the uh, Rio Grande cutthroat into, uh, into several bodies of water. So that's, that's an opportunity for a lot of people. Is the state known as a, what was the word I'm looking for is that I'm going to come to the state and actually I'm going to, I'm going to do some really, uh, eventful fishing like you talk about the cutthroat you're building back the the stocks there but do people act do a lot of people come from outside of new mexico into the state and say we're going to go hunting or go fishing and because it's just i'm sure it's a wonderful experience it's such a beautiful state but are they going to get take trophies back home or or share fish stories around the campfire drinking a uh, a beer or a, a bottle of rum or something yeah, there, there are definitely those opportunities. We, we do get a, a number of uh, sportsmen and sportswomen from out of state uh, come here. Our, our trout fishery is uh, world famous, especially up in the uh, northwestern corner of the state, uh, up around Farmington. Uh, the, the San Juan River drainage is, is world renowned for, for its okay. trout fishing. Okay. And what other game and fish besides the, the ibex that you were just chanting, any, any other uh, species that uh, would be of interest. To, like for myself, I love birding and I, I'm, I'm very much a novice of it, but to go out there with my camera and see some wonderful birds, what would what, mm -hmm. what I see if I was going to, besides the beautiful scenery again, what, what other, uh, species am I going to be able to take some photos of? Well, there, there's definitely a, we are one of the most, if not the most biodiverse state. In the country, so. There, there are a number of opportunities, uh, pretty much anything that you would want to see, uh, in a, uh, landlocked desert state, we've got it. So. Okay. Very cool. So I am curious too, you you are the communications director. What was your career prior to that? I mean, how did you end up in this role? Well, it's interesting. I, I, I did grow up in, uh, in Moab, Utah, which is kind of the, uh, outdoor Mecca of the Southwest these days. So. And, and my family owned a canoe rental business for 30 years up there. I also went to, to college, uh, not far from Zion national park on the other side of Utah. Uh, oh, wow. so, so I was always, I, I always kind of had a relationship with the outdoors, but as, as a young kid, uh, my passion was always sports like the, the stick and ball sports. So right. when I went to college, uh, I went to college with the goal of becoming a professional newspaper sports writer and, uh, turned out that, uh, that worked out for, for a little while, well, 15 years. So I, I kind of bounced around various papers in, in Mexico and Utah and Southern California. And I, I got to the point where I just needed something different. I'd seen the inside of too many high school gyms, Yeah, uh, spent too many Friday nights in the middle of the fall on the, on the sideline of a high school football field when it was 20 degrees outside. And I decided I, I wanted to try something different. And I, I just kind of went back to, to my childhood. Of, like when my family owned the canoe business, they ran a, a jet boat shuttle down the Colorado river. Th those times that I could just hop on the boat when my uncle was driving and have him drop me off, off on the, uh, on the shoreline there and let me hike around those slot canyons for, for hours at a time and come pick me up on his way back up river. Um, that, that kind of came back to me. I'd actually just completed a, a second bachelor's degree at that point. I'd been studying, uh, Spanish at the university of Utah, uh, going to school part-time and had finished that degree and was looking for a new opportunity. Uh, happened to see, uh, that New Mexico department of game and fish was at the time hiring a, uh, a, uh, an editor for their, uh, monthly newsletter and, uh, also was hoping for somebody who could speak Spanish, which I just finished my Spanish degree. So it, it worked out and I've been here for almost three years now and, uh, it, it's certainly flown by. That's perfect timing. And by the way, I am incredibly envious of the story you shared about your uncle dropping you off on the shore so you can explore and picking you up on the way back home because 
you know, I grew up in a city. We had little parks near us, but and there's a couple of little county parks, but the Colorado River, that's like the granddaddy of them all. And it's uh, that had to have been a wonderful experience. And what was it like just kind of growing up and having the outdoor businesses, your family businesses? And it's kind of like you had toys, outdoor toys available to you and just the experiences you could have with those. Oh, it'd be taken for granted when you're 15, 16, 17 years old um, that I could get in my car and drive five minutes and be completely isolated. We had our, like all, all of us local kids had our, our little swimming hole up at Slock. Um, we could drive 20 minutes and be up in the mountains, up in the Aspens. And I had friends who had cabin up on a, on a mountain lake there fishing and, and hanging out. It, it was just unreal. Like I said, stuff like my uncle dropping me off from the jet boat on, on the shoreline. Uh, even when I was younger, my, my grandfather and I did a, uh, a five day, four night canoe trip, just the two of us oh, down wow. the flat walker stretch of the green river, that, that kind of stuff, having that immediately available to you is it's an experience that not a lot of people have. And I'm very thankful for what I got to experience where I came from. That is incredibly special. And, and especially first your uncle, now you mentioned your grandfather. And it's just like, I, I just, again, a little envious, but uh, I mean, those are experiences you have for the rest of your life. And that is fantastic. So I, I'm curious, getting back to your current role, what is a day in the life of a communications director? Well, no two days are the same. That That's for sure. Um, you know, you could have kind of a, a relaxed day where you're just kind of managing, managing staff and things like that. But you can also just as easily have a, a mountain lion show up in downtown Albuquerque. <laughs> um, TV stations are calling, newspapers are calling. You're having to, to scramble to talk to uh, our game wardens who were there on scene or um the, the biologists who are, who can answer questions to what brings a mountain lion into town. So you, you can have those days that are a little bit more scrambly and trying to, to figure out what you can tell the media and, uh, you know, keep the public's mind at ease that, uh, mountain lion been taken care of. Um, here's how to avoid, uh, attracting more of them into town. Okay. And taking care of, uh, does that mean tranquilizing it, doing a physical on it, and then relocating it back to someplace that's more uh, appropriate? Yeah, that that's actually happened fairly recently around here where uh, we just uh, tranquilized it uh, and uh, took it about 150 miles away and, and dropped it off. And, okay. Uh, got, got it up, up out of civilization. All right. So if I decide to make uh, Albuquerque or Santa Fe my my next home after Las Vegas, I will uh, I'll be I'll have to be aware of uh, the outdoors and uh, potential mountain lion uh, uh, visits. Hopefully not. Hopefully from afar. Yeah, fingers fingers crossed that that you don't have too many close encounters. But uh, right. the the wilderness is definitely your backyard in a lot of ways around here yeah well it's like with with albuquerque i mean you're kind of blocked by the the mountains the desert there's a reservation so it's literally you're surrounded by nature and mm -hmm. i'm reminded so i grew up well in detroit but i lived in chicago about half my life and we have a coyote uh population in in, in down near grand park and one of them decided to go into the loop and made its way into, I think it was like a 7-Eleven or a White Hand Pantry, a, if, an old store chain that was around, and decided he was going to take a nap in the cooler. So that, <laughs> that's the excitement we got. So what is the range of services besides just the licenses? Like when I was kind of doing the research uh, for today's episode, I went out to the website, and, and I do see there's very prominent the button by your license, but what are what are the other range of services that the department is actively involved in day to day? Well, the big one is that we are actually responsible for the off highway vehicle program in this state. We provide 
training and, and things like that. And we, uh, we help regulate it. Uh, so that's, that's one of the big things. Uh, the other big thing is just, uh, education programs in general. We do a lot of, uh, wildlife based, uh, visits, schools and things like that, getting kids interested in, in, in fishing. We're also responsible for the hunter education program here. Uh, so there, there is a, a wide variety of things that, that we do. Okay. Now, and since you have been with the department these last couple of years, is there one or two moments that you look back and it's like, well, that was exciting. I mean, the mountain lion or, uh, Marty the Moose aside, any other <laughs> events? Well, the first one that comes to mind actually was just a couple months into me being here. It's a unique job when, uh, when somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, how do you feel about, uh, going camping up in the mountains for the next four nights? You know, it's definitely a, a change from, uh, staying in cheap chain motels to staying in a tent. But uh, anyway, we, it was part of that project to uh, restore the Rio Grande cutthroat. We were uh, just wrapping up that project and they needed uh, somebody to kind of stand watch along the roads and, and tell people uh, what was going on and why they couldn't fish the, the creeks that day, um, why, why the water was closed, what, what we were doing. So going up there and also just getting to, to sit in camp with, uh, with the biologists after, after their hard day of work and stocking fish and, and whatnot. Uh, it's just interesting to hear the, the scope of that project that again, it was a multiple decade project that, uh, it had taken the combined work of several entities and, and to see that kind of come to fruition. It's somebody who had spent 15 years covering high school sports at that point, um, you, you kind of realize that suddenly you're part of something much larger and, and much more important. And, uh, a, another experience, um, like that came, I, I guess, kind of about a year and a half ago, we had had, uh, three bear cubs that had ended up at a, at a rehab vet, uh, after the, the mother bear was hit by a car on the interstate. Um, so they had been at the, uh, rehab vet facility, um, for lack of a better word, kind of fattening up to, to go out on their own and come December or, or January, December 22, January 23, somewhere in there, I got the opportunity to be with our biologist and our veterinarian and, uh, several other people who were involved and, uh, we got to release those cubs back into the wild. And that, that's one of those things that you kind of realize that there's so much to, to what we do that, that people don't realize is part of game and fit. Sure. But you just, you, you mentioned a couple of the, the scientists and in, in the, in the medical, the vet, what other professions make up the department besides obviously communication, you've got the the commissioner, you've got, you've got a variety of scientists, educators, but what, what are some more examples of who these folks are? Oh, we've, we've got pretty much everything, uh, that, that makes all business run. You've got financial people all, all the way up to, to biologists and veterinarians, and researchers and education staff. And yeah. There, there's a lot that goes into, into making a, a department tick. And actually we're one of the smaller ones out there, at least on a national scale. Like our, our entire department is a little under 300 employees, um, where you look at our neighbor to the east in Texas and, uh, their communication staff is larger than our entire department. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, opportunity out there. If you don't have a science degree, which I don't, I'm a trained journalist. There's lots of opportunities for anybody who has any sort of interest in, in the outdoors in any way at all to, to be a part of this. I love it. I love it. And I'm curious too, is a department like yours, 
are there partnerships with the educational institutions and p- perhaps some of the research they're doing? Are they a part of this, the mix, like with the reentry, the, 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 the trout or the you know, working with the bears, et cetera? Certainly. We, we do have a relationship with, uh, with the universities here in New Mexico and also on a, some, some other universities nationwide have joined in with us on various projects. Yeah, there, there's definitely, it's definitely important for us to, uh, to work with those institutions and, uh, also provide those students, the, the next generation of conservationists, the opportunity to, uh, to have that hands-on experience. Okay. And with the department or any state government for that matter, there's always this public perception and sometimes it's good. Oh my God, these guys were so helpful or. Oh my God, I got to pay this, uh, another license, or there's a restriction. I sh- should be able to go down this road and I can't. How do you handle the situations where a public maybe just doesn't really appreciate the the service that you are providing or the need to maybe have some restrictions because some areas perhaps they need to recover. They're, they're off limits, not because we don't want you ever to be there, but these areas need to recover. How do you deal with that? Well, well, and, and you just hit it on the head right there, where a lot of the areas that, that we restrict access to are either because they need to recover. I mean, obviously, we we had huge fires over the last several years here in New Mexico that have, uh, have greatly affected the landscape and, and habitat for animals, and it's, it's going to take some time for those areas to bounce back. It's also for to, to ensure that we have wildlife going. If you're going into sensitive areas and upsetting wildlife habitat and upsetting the wildlife themselves, you're, you're putting them in danger. Uh, the opportunities that you're seeking, if you're illegally leaving a trail to, to go hunting or something like that, the long-term effects that kind of the cascading domino effect of, of that uh, mm-hmm. can be much larger than might be obvious at first. Then as far as there, there is definitely some gnashing of teeth of Oh, why do I have to, to pay so much for a license? Why do I have to pay so much for, for a tag in the draw? Um, all that funding, as well as, you know, we, we've got funding from uh, Pippin-Robertson Act and things like that. All that funding goes to, to help further the conservation of these wildlife for, for future generations. I keep coming back to, to that statement, but it, right. it's true. We, we couldn't do what we do without that funding. We would not be able to, to do the work that's necessary to ensure a, a sustainable wildlife population. For Excellent. As you look forward, perhaps five years, 10 years, and I do realize like with the cutthroat, th- this took many years, but are there initiatives that are publicly known that are going to be really important for the state, for the department in the next five to 10 years that we should be keeping an eye on? Well, none immediately come to mind, but there are several things in the works, uh, especially with our, our species of greatest conservation need that we are working to, to conserve those. Okay. Okay. And if do you ever have a chance to to go out to like the the high schools, the junior highs, the elementary schools, and kind of do a, a a show and tell? And here's what we do, and bring in some of the animals and get the students interested, and perhaps going. When I get older, I want this. I want your job, or I want to work for the Department of Game and Fish. Yeah, I I haven't personally been able to do too many of those, but definitely got people whose whose main role is to get into those schools and and they they tell me all the time they they see those those kids eyes light up when you bring in uh, a, a trunk full of, of pelts or, or or skulls or things like that and that they get them interested that wow we have that here in new mexico i i could do that our our game wardens get out and, and get presentations as well and it gets the wheels turning and kids heads and yeah, I, I could be out there. My, my office could be the, the front seat of, of a truck just out in the wilderness all the time. 
I mean, that that's a great trade-off as opposed to being stuck in a cubicle all day. That's for sure. Most definitely that. So I, I need to put you on the spot, Darren, and I, but you're a director of uh, a department communications director, so I know you'll handle this, but imagine a family, my family wants to come to New Mexico and spend, let's just say a week. Mm -hmm. What's your top 10 list for me? Okay. Top 10 list. You're thinking like tourist attractions or, uh, well, I want to, I want to, for, uh, first off, I want good food and I know you have really good food in New Mexico. So. We don't have to, I don't want you to put it, get anybody upset because you didn't mention them. But if I'm going to get, you know, I want to get out of the city. I'm going to do the local museums, but I want to get out and explore. I want to do some hiking, take some photos, just experience the best that nature has to offer in New Mexico. Well, for me, I, I'm lucky enough to, to live in Santa Fe, which is one of the most scenic capital cities in country. It's the oldest capital city in the country. Um, okay. we're, we're here at, uh, at 7,000 feet, the foot in Sangre de Cristos. So ha having that right in your backyard, uh, got a uh, Pecos wilderness, not far up the hill from us, uh, that there's some spectacular hiking, spectacular fishing up around there. We we've got any number of We've got several national forests. We've got national parks around here. Chaco Canyon is uh, between Albuquerque and Farmington. If you want to go check out the ruins, uh, that that's a great opportunity. And we're we're the fifth largest state by land area and one of the most sparsely populated. So there, th if you want to get out in the middle of nowhere and just kind of soak up nature, there's there's so many opportunities around here. Uh, go go down to the Gila or uh, go go check out the 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 mountains up here around uh, Taos and, and Santa Fe. And there, there, there's a lot. Okay. Okay. Now I, I, I appreciate that. And then you did great in answering that question. When you're, the fact that you're living in Santa Fe, I, there, there's another little envy uh, factor going on here. When I made my relocation from Chicago to Las Vegas, I actually was going to spend a week in Albuquerque but I decided you know, I'm so close. I need to go to Santa Fe. So I ended up going up to Santa Fe instead. But imagine you're, I mean, it's, uh, let's see, it's 3.30 here in Las Vegas. It should be 4.30 in uh, Santa Fe. So it's five, it's almost five o'clock somewhere. Okay. Where are you going right after work and to, whether it's for a, a, an adult beverage of sort or, or, or a good meal, where are you going to, where are you going to go? Ah, that's, that's a tough question because Santa Fe is actually kind of a foodie town. Uh-huh. So it, I, I have that, uh, that kind of ongoing debate in my head every day. And uh, <laughs> where, where do I go tonight? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I do realize if living in Santa Fe, I mean, mind you, I need to lose some weight, but so I think I'm there too. Off. Yeah. So uh, definitely thank God the hiking is available uh, to us. Any other uh, insights that you would like to share with our audience about why New Mexico, why this the, really a compelling reason to get folks to come and, and visit and learn more about the great things that are going on in your state? Well, first of all, uh, we've just got beautiful landscapes here, beautiful, varied landscapes. We've got everything from... Uh, wide open grassland in, in the eastern part of the state we've got the mountains coming down the middle we've got desert down in uh in las cruces and down in the boot hill down by the mexican border you've got well most of our state's water is up in the very northwest quarter with with spectacular fishing so mm -hmm. pretty much anything you can think of we have and it, it's kind of unspoiled right now we we don't like like i said we've got a huge land area and not a whole lot of people. So if you want to just get out and explore the outdoors, this is the place for you. And uh, on top of that, New Mexico just has a, a unique culture. It's unlike any other place in the country. Uh, okay. Fair enough. So it's, I, I definitely, I mean, from my perspective, one week was not long enough and uh, I need to pay another visit. 
Now I am curious, and you, you touched a little bit on this early on in our in our chat today, but has there been a moment in your career? You've been at the uh, at the department for like three years now. Is there an aha moment for you when you look back and it's like, wow, I get to really do this. This this is amazing. It's it's definitely a lot different than Friday night lights on a on a cold <laughs> fall evening. Yeah, like I said, getting to go up. Uh, it's part of those, uh, Rio Grande cutthroat trout projects. Um, I, I definitely had those moments of just sitting up in nature where for 15 years, I, my office was either my cubicle at, at, in the newsroom or some dimly lit high school gym somewhere. Instead of sitting up in the mountains, just enjoying the scenery and you, you realize this is my office now. And, and it's just, it, it is totally an aha moment. Of, you know, I, I, I am a lucky person to, to have this opportunity. Fantastic. And before we end uh, today, uh, Darren, if any final insight uh, that you would like to share with our audience could be just a point of view, a, a book, a quote, something that really you would like to leave our listeners with? Well, I, I would say for, for anybody who is kind of in a, in a position like I was, where it's time to make a change, you've, you've got a passion for the outdoors, but you, know, you might not have the science degree or something. I, I would say the biggest thing is just don't be afraid to bet on yourself and, and take a chance. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, a, a lot of people at first, when I said, oh, I'm, I'm flying to, to work a game and fish and, uh, pack it up and, and move into Santa Fe. There were a lot of people who thought I was crazy. There, there were a lot of people who they're like, you don't know anything about biology. You got a journalism degree, <laughs> but, um, the outdoors is your passion. It, for me growing up in Moab, it, I couldn't really help, but to have it be a passion. Sure. Um, sure. Go ahead and take a chance. There, there's so many opportunities out there. Take a look at, at Game and Fish or whatever your state's equivalent is. Take a look at uh, state parks and, and just see what's available out there. See, see what fits your skill set and, and take a chance. I, I love that. And folks that say, well, what are you doing? And they, that, that to me is a, from a coaching perspective, because that's my other job as a business coach, but it's a, it's a closed mindset and an open mindset by taking chances and other opportunities arise. And you've got a great job. We are government work, whether it's very local, state, federal, they don't pay the most, but you get to see the difference you're making day in, day out and have a good quality of life. And it sounds like you're in the right spot where you needed to be. Absolutely. There, there's not a second that goes by that, that I don't realize how, how lucky I am to be where I am. And I, I truly appreciate the, the opportunity that I have to have a, a positive effect in the lives of uh, so, so many people, even, even if it's, you know, kind of on the periphery of things. Very good. Listen, before we head out, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and the Department of Game and Fish, where are the best places for them to go? Well, first and foremost, you can check out our website, www.wildlife.state.nm.us. We're also out there on uh, Facebook and Instagram. We actually have a, a, a pretty strong following on both those pages. We do have a YouTube account where uh, our, our very talented videographer is uh, constantly uh, posting new things. And he's, he's been with us about a year and is uh, just uh, starting to build up. Uh, a good library of things. So if you want to see a little slice of what we do, it's all right there on YouTube. Excellent. And I won't put you on the spot again. I, I know you, you and I were chatting beforehand. And one of the reasons you were attended the workshop that uh, Rick and I uh, facilitated down in Gulf Shores last year is you guys have your sights set on a podcast. Can you share just a little bit about it? What's, what's the goal and objective? So we have had a podcast in the past. It's meant to be kind of an offshoot of our, uh, of our monthly newsletter, uh, New Mexico Wildlife, which actually the, 
in its printed form dates back 80 plus years. Oh, um, wow. So the podcast is, is kind of under that same umbrella. And um, it, thanks to some staffing issues, it's, it's kind of unfortunately slipped by the wayside in, in the last year, but we have, uh, we're, we're back up at full staff now and uh, excited to, uh, to relaunch the podcast. It could feature anything from uh, interviews with biologists in the field as they're embarking on some of these, um, these projects off the beat path uh, or surveying uh, deer and elk from a helicopter. Or it could also include uh, stories from the public, stories from the everyman, the everywoman. Uh, about their experiences hunting and fishing here in New Mexico. That is wonderful. And that you've just hit it right on the head. The true benefit of the podcast is to promote and share everything that's going on inside your department, highlight the, the, the staff that's making things happen, but also the, the stories and the experiences from the folks who are consuming your products and your services. So I, I look forward to, uh, following that when it's up and running. And of course, anything we can do to support you, we're, we're here as well. Darren, it's been a pleasure to have you on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. I'm glad we were finally able to uh, get you on. I know we've had a little stops and starts, but we're here today and it's been a great episode. And you have me excited to want to come back to uh, New Mexico and perhaps explore it as a uh, uh, another destination on where's how we're going to live next. So Again, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Well, and we'd certainly love to have you here in New Mexico. Thank you again for, for your time. And uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity. Sounds like a plan. Listen, stay on the line. We're going to do a real quick close and you and I can have a final chat, okay? Okay. All right, folks. We've just been chatting with Darren Vaughn, Communications Director for New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. Really a very another great episode. Just I don't know about you, but, you know, when I think of New Mexico, I think of wide open spaces, wonderful scenery, sunsets, great food, uh, great exploration of nature. Uh, of course, you, and you have all this wildlife in, whether it's fish and birds and mammals, and it's all available to you and this beautiful state. And if Darren hasn't wet, whetted your appetite to want to come to New Mexico for a visit, uh, then, hey, I can't help you. But uh, I know if, if you're into the outdoors and the exploration, stewardship, conservation, this is a great destination for you. Now, you do want to go out to visit uh, the department's uh, website. We'll provide the backlinks to it as well as to their social sites on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, when their podcast is up and running, we'll uh, also go back and share that link as well. As for us, you can find these episodes on the Outdoor Adventure Series on our website, outdooradventureseries.com. We also have pages on Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. And you can, of course, can find us on all of the podcast directories. So please comment about today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. So we want to hear what you think. Uh, like it. Uh, on whether it's on the directories or on our social sites. And of course, share it with your friends and family who you think will benefit uh, from listening to our episode today and interview with Darren. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day, and we will see you on a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care.